Welcome back. Thank you, Dr. Hotchkiss, again for coming on our channel and uh, doing a nice presentation for us and, and for questions that we've, getting, we've been getting from our viewers regarding residency programs, how to contact them. So thank you again for coming on today. And if you can, just give a, give a brief introdu introduction about yourself, about people who don't know you as of now. Yeah, so I'm uh, Dr. Adam Hodgkiss. All of you guys can just call me Adam. I'm a second year resident in Phoenix, Arizona. I went to CSPM where these guys are at. We never met during school, uh, but we did meet through YouTube because if you guys don't know, I have a YouTube channel as well. So shameless plug right here, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, so I'm just a resident here in Arizona and willing to answer some questions for you guys. And of course, it's not shameless at all. We'll leave the your YouTube link in the description down below, as well as your Instagram, so everyone can go follow you and subscribe to you because you have amazing content and your video editing skills, plus your production is out of this world. It's phenomenal. So everyone, please check out Dr. Adam Hotchkiss' YouTube channel. If you don't, then you're losing out. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So Diksha, do you want to start us off with the questions? Okay, perfect. So... You, you both can hear me, right? I can. Okay. So let's just start off. Uh, we're going to ask you just one question at a time. Um, so when did you start contacting the residency programs? Like what year were you in in podiatric medical school? So the earliest I did, I think I was actually a second year. And that is really early, actually. But I remember it, it worked out like I was traveling down south to Southern California and I was like, I'm going to be down there. There's a few programs I'm interested in down there. So I reached out to them and I just kind of went for a little day tour thing. Um, but each of them said how much I was standing out as doing that as a second year. So that was actually beneficial, I think, going. Um, so that would be the first time. I didn't do a lot of that. That was my only one time. And it was just because I was going for a trip. So I might as well stop by. I didn't go out of my way, though, to really visit anyone until pretty much my fourth year when I was already doing clerkships and I'd be out and about. Because all of us know we, we don't have a lot of money. It's extremely hard to just up and fly all the way around the, the country, basically, because there's so many programs. Just flying around visiting programs is not really feasible for most of us. So I really didn't do a lot of it unless I was already in that area already. Okay, yeah, thank you. That does make sense. It makes us feel a lot better because um, Yona and I really haven't done much of that yet. So, yeah. um, okay, Yona, do you want to ask you, So I just wanted to follow up. Is there a benefit you would say if you're doing it your second year versus um, a third year or fourth year? Honestly, the more FaceTime you get with those people, um, especially like the residents or the director, whoever is making the decisions, the better because come time for them to make that final decision during match, they are going to know you really well if you've been seeing them. I know some people were talking to programs from the beginning of like first year or even earlier if they were interested in podiatry and they had family or something. I know like a girl in my class was talking to the program she's at since before she'd even started. That was like her goal. She knew she was going to match there eventually. So she started that process early. It can never be a bad thing, I think, unless you're super annoying and they don't like you, which I think you hopefully you would be getting those vibes. Um, overall, I think it's just a good thing to get more face time. Got you. Uh, that's good to know. Wow. Uh, good for that girl uh, for reaching <laughs> out that early. Wow. That she had really good initiative and she knew what she really wanted immediately. Um, so her second question, how did you contact your residency programs? Was there a particular way that you'd say that would benefit students to contact programs or is, did, you, did you cold call them? Did you email them? What would you say? Um, I personally always like email or text versus phone calls. So I think most of us are probably that way in our generation. So I think I went to uh, like Casper Crip and just went through that list of programs that they have. Usually they'll have a contact person on there. Um, sometimes those contact people aren't super helpful in the people that you will be visiting, but they can usually send you the number or email of somebody who is because it's normally a resident that they want you to meet up and talk to usually like the second year residents, I think, deal with visiting students. So they'll usually, you know, give you the contact of them at least, but they usually get back to you because that person designated, that email on there that's designated for uh, that program is usually the person who's going to be talking to applicants and things. 
and got then, you. Oh, sorry. Anna. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so then, if they if they don't respond immediately, or or I, I guess I should ask, how long should we be waiting for them to respond? And then when they don't respond uh, within a certain period of time, what do we do after that? Should we email them again, or should we then resort to calling them? What would you think about that? Yeah, I honestly, I wouldn't even know how to go about it. That stuff's so difficult and it can be really challenging in your student. I remember I was dealing with that with like a clerkship I was going to. I didn't get any information going in. And then I'd like call the hospital and the hospital doesn't really know because they're a program at the hospital and they don't really know about the program, especially like the small podiatry residency that's there. So that can be really difficult. Um, I would probably suggest asking around and trying to find one of the residents on social media or something or like LinkedIn. I think I actually did that for one or two. Like, hey, I'm this student and I plan on visiting your program. Do, is, do you guys have a good contact for me? And most residents will be fine and won't mind you doing that. Just to follow up on that really quick. So about LinkedIn, I, I mean, we just started LinkedIn and I know you have an established LinkedIn base. Do you think that most podiatry students, uh, podiatric medical students should have a LinkedIn by now? Um, I don't know if should or not. It'd probably be helpful. I, I guess I do. Like, I feel like I have a lot of followers and things on there, but I'm so, I'm not active at all. Um, so I really don't understand LinkedIn very well. Uh, maybe one day it'll be beneficial for me. I feel like it's really beneficial in like the tech world and things like that. As far as medicine goes, I don't know if it'll ever really help me or not. I just kind of have it because I'm a professional and I felt like that was the thing to do as a professional, like going in even to medical school. So I don't know if it helps or not. Maybe it is nice to be able to find other people on there because most podiatrists and things do have that. So that's one means of being able to contact them. And if you do it through there, it feels a little... Um, less intrusive than like finding their personal Instagram or Facebook, unless they have one that's public and, and they promote their podiatry and stuff a lot. But if you contact them on LinkedIn, at least personally, I feel like it's a little more of a professional outlet. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you, doctor. Yeah. Um, so how did you decide which residency programs to visit? Yeah, that's extremely hard. Um, really tough when it comes to which ones to clerk at too. Uh, I, I guess I narrowed it down to location. What places do you want to be? And then you kind of just have to go off hearsay, which is really hard because you're limited basically on like where the class above you went. That's all you really talk to. And so you maybe have like 20 programs that you've heard about and there's what, like 150 or something. So it's really hard. They also have that. I don't know if they still do, but they had that survey thing. Do they send that out to you guys? where people like rank each fellowship or clerkship that they do and everything. I would look at yeah. that a lot and just kind of look for things that interested me in programs. Um, yeah, that's one of the hardest things for me. It was like, and I think like, do you guys still get five clerkships at CSPM? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you get five clerkships out of like, whatever I said, 150. I don't know how many actual programs are, but it's a very small amount out of a massive list of programs. And it's really overwhelming to think of even where to start. So I guess I would just go based on location first and also, unfortunately, hearsay and stuff. Where did your upperclassmen go? What have you heard? Yeah, I'm sorry I don't have better kind of uh, information for you guys. That's basically what I did, too. Yeah, that's perfect. So then, so basically, you, you apply to certain programs for externships and then Probably, so you're saying probably the ones that you were also interested in, but you didn't exactly have the chance to round out, I guess um, you would go visit those. Right? Yeah, definitely. What And then some places like, if you look at places like Detroit or like Florida, um, New York, those places have a lot of residency programs in small areas, kind of all close to each other. Those are kind of perfect to get at least one clerkship in. And then during your month, you can hopefully skip a day or two and go visit those programs and just kind of kill two birds with one stone. Um, that would be something I didn't really do myself. I did kind of down in Southern California because there was at least a few programs there. And I think I visited like three in one month when I was at one clerkship, which was helpful. Um, that would probably be the most efficient way to spend a month. Oh, wait a second. So so I actually didn't realize this was possible. So you're saying you didn't just visit the programs over the 
weekends, or I don't even know if that's a possibility, but you're saying you took a day off from your actual externship. How did you go about doing yeah, that when that, you told the program? That can be super tricky. Um, actually, my favorite clerkship that I did was Long Beach Memorial. They were super cool and they scheduled in days for you to visit other programs, which I just thought was the most cool thing because you know, we're all playing the game and they understood that and they understood you have a lot, or you have limited time to visit a lot of programs. And they basically were like your last week, you can kind of do with what you want. If you want to go visit programs, go for it. And I thought that was really awesome of them. And they didn't hold, they didn't hold against you if you did. Other places you kind of, maybe you can contact them early and be like, I have an event on this day. Do you mind if I have a half day or something? But you kind of got to play it and feel the water. Some programs might be like not feeling it, not having it, other programs might be way more lax and loose. I would usually put it towards the end of the month after you've made a really good impression, maybe even ask just to leave a day early for travel, but actually go visit a program. It's all a game and it really sucks. And I'm sorry to all oh, that's, the students. That's, that's, no, that's incredible. I yeah. honestly didn't even know that. And uh, uh, props to Long Beach Memorial for even allowing students to do that, especially yeah, during the extra awesome. month. They're wow, definitely that's, an awesome program. Yeah, that's definitely one of the programs that I'm actually looking at right now to externship at. So um, I'm looking forward to that. It's, yeah, that's great. great. Yeah. So um, when you did go into these programs, uh, when you did visit a residency program, did you prepare at all for that day? Did you research any papers? Did you just brush up on your uh, podiatric surgical skills? Did you do something in order for you to impress them? Yeah, day. I don't think that most are going to be doing like classic pimping. They, they probably won't, not than any that I went to, but I would definitely at least look into the program, kind of know how many residents they take, what they kind of specialize in. If they have a director that's big in research, they always want their egos kind of floated. So look up their papers and at least have them and know them. Um, I never had to like cite any or anything, but if I was going in, I would at least know them. So if it came up, I wasn't like completely oblivious and I showed some interest. Uh, that would be the main stuff. Just kind of know a little bit about the program at least and have a good answer on why are you interested in this. Have that for every place that you go to. Don't just say like, oh, I like the area because then, I don't know, you know, that's not a great answer. Yeah, and, and then did you did you dress a certain way? Did you like, have supplies on you, I guess? <laughs> that will really depend on what your day is going to be like. I think I wore like business attire every time. I think I wore my white coat every time too, just because I was going to be walking through the hospital. Um, I, think you, that, I don't think you have to do that, but uh, the few of the places I went told me like, you're going to come, come with us on rounds and we'll talk then because it was residents taking you around, they're busy. Um, so I at least wore the white coat, so I wasn't going to stand out in the hospital and I could just kind of fit in and they would know I was a student tagging along. So I would definitely wear like business casual or yeah, business casual is probably fine. Like a tie and slacks for guys and whatever business casual is for you ladies. Um, do that. And then I don't bring supplies or anything like that because a lot of places, especially now, they're probably not going to be even letting you onto the, into the hospital because of COVID and everything. If you're lucky though, you might be tagging along just watching the residents round. But the most of the time it was, a lot of times they have a designated kind of visitor window and they'll bring you in and show you a PowerPoint or something. That's how it went for me a few times. And they showed us like, these are the key points of the program. And then we asked questions, we met, maybe it'd be like meeting in the hospital cafeteria for an hour or so and the residents would just answer questions. Kind of like your interviews that you did for like when you um, interviewed in med school. You know, when you met with the students and you guys had lunch and stuff at CSPM and you kind of talked, that was very similar to how it was meeting with residents and residency programs for just the visit day. Oh, so it's not a full day then. You're not, you're not expecting kind of like wake up 5.30 and come back at Really depends. Yeah, it really depends. Some, um, most programs just don't have the time to take on a student for the whole day. So they'll say like, my lunch break is between 12 and 1, come and we can talk then. Others might say, like, you can follow us throughout the morning, we'll be rounding, and then they go off to surgery or something. So it really depend. I never, I, to, I don't think I ever spent more than, like, two hours tops of visiting the program. Other people I do know, though, have been able to tag along for the whole day. So it'll really vary. 
Oh, that's that's great to know. Um, I did. I expected it to be just like a typical clinic clinic day where you do wear scrubs and then you do follow the residents and you do like go work with them or at least shadow them. But yeah, good to sure. know that that's not usually the case. I bet it varies completely, but a lot of hospitals aren't going to like, say you take off to New York or something to visit, they, the hospital doesn't know you. So you're not going to be able to even put hands on any patient, you know? Right. Um, that will depend though, I think based on like the clinic you're in, because like one of the clinics that you guys have or used to have, it was extremely busy and it was so busy that if people were visiting, they're like, Hey, go see patients with them. Um, and That'll just, it'll really depend probably place to place, but I think most places are just going to be a meet and greet and talk for an hour or two and just get to know each other and see what, answer some questions for you and stuff. If you're lucky, you'll get to meet the director, but you're usually just going to meet a resident or two. And then while we're on this subject, can you just talk about like what a typical visit day for your program would be like just for students who want to visit your program? Are you, because you're a second year resident, are you the the go-to guy where they recommend, oh, Dr. Adam Hopsis is going to be the one who's going to be talking to you, presenting to you. How does that work for your program? Yeah, I've, I think due to like this YouTube channel and everything, I've kind of just taken on that <laughs> role anyways. Like people, are, um, they're contacting me. Right now, we aren't taking any students outside of ones that are already clerking there or have their core or something there. Um, but on typically on days that they didn't, um, they're usually... The ones that I remember like came in and they kind of just tagged along with a resident and clinic all day, which that it, I didn't really like it. I feel like we're just putting them to work with us. Um, I think it would be better if we could actually just sit down and talk to them like I was able to as a student. It is nice because you get to kind of see the work, but you don't really get a lot of questions answered and stuff. Like as a student, when the resident's doing work, seeing patients, you don't want to be interjecting like, oh, hey, do you guys double scrub and stuff? You know, it just, you don't feel right. So you're kind of just sitting there helping the resident. Um, I would prefer it to be a one-on-one. -on -one. But at my program, we're so busy, you're just going to tag along with the resident likely. And I know from I, when I was visiting Long Beach, visiting, I actually did a Skype call with one of the second year residents. Is that the case with your program right now because no one can visit you guys do you guys do skype calls and present or no actually we don't that would be nice but again we're just always so busy but gotcha. anyone interested can definitely get a hold of me on here instagram whatever and we could talk but it's not going to be like an official thing but that's super that's awesome that they did that did they give you like a presentation of the program and everything yeah it was uh they who was it who gave me it was uh put dr Dana. Dana, uh oh yeah there's dana, dana and tim or their second years yeah she she gave me a full presentation of long beach so awesome yeah see that's really, really cool nice. that's how that's how a lot of my visits went but in person because back in my day we didn't live through pandemics and stuff so. <laughs> um it seemed so weird it was a few years ago and it seemed completely different but it would be the same thing but we just go do that in person got you nowadays you're actually saving money this way so that's awesome right and at least <laughs> it's showing that you were taking the initiative to contact them yeah want to visit them and so that's a good plus wait i don't know like i said my programs are so busy we don't do anything official like that um unfortunately but when i went to programs like that and stuff i remember they would say like we're adding your name to a list of people who have visited so it's kind of nice wow that's really good to know Thanks for sharing that, yeah. And because I went on that um, sort of visitation Skype call, my problem I felt like, and maybe you can clarify for people who are watching this, I just didn't have really good questions. And do you think you could recommend some questions that could really bring out like the quality of the residency program out of the person you're shadowing or talking to? Because for me, I was always asking like, oh, do you have to uh, compete with orthos for different uh, cases? And is your, is your residency program more academic based versus surgical based versus clinical based? And that was sort of my mindset in those questions. But if there's more questions that you think you could recommend, we would love to hear it for the rest of the audience. Yeah, those are good questions. And I would also just basically figure out what you want out of a residency and then ask them if they have those qualities. If you want a lot of forefoot training, 
ask what kind of numbers they're getting in that if you want a lot of rear foot, if you want a lot of trauma, um, that would be stuff. And like you, the questions you asked are great. Like, are you academic? Are you more clinic based? Do you have clinic at all? How many surgical numbers are you getting? Are you guys double scrubbing a lot? Things that are important to you. Or what's the what's your day like? What are your hours when you get there? When do you leave? Do you take a lot of night calls? Are you on the weekends? Because those things will all be more or less important to different people. So whatever important to you, like if you have a family and you don't want to be working every single night and working weekends, that's a viable question to ask, in my opinion. Like how long do you guys work? What are your typical hours? How much call do you take? Things like that. Perfect. That, that's honestly helpful. I was not even thinking about, I didn't even think about asking the resident, resident about her lifestyle at that time. I was just thinking about, oh, just the program itself. So yeah, it's super hard about. as, especially as like a third year, even as a fourth year, you're just kind of scraping a surface, even understanding what a resident does and what it means to be a resident and the requirements right. and stuff. Like I didn't even know what it meant. Like, oh, do you guys double scrub? I didn't really care before. I, who cares? I get to be in the case. Why it matters to residents and why residents are worried about that is because we're not getting full credit if we're a double scrubbing. The only the first, like the first assist is getting the credit for the numbers and you need X amount of numbers to graduate your residency. So as far as like double scrubbing, it doesn't really matter. You're still getting the experience, but it matters as far as numbers go. So I never knew that as a student, but it's something like everyone talked about and I just acted like I knew what it meant to like smiled and nodded like, yeah, double scrubbing sucks, I think, but that's why. So you don't even really know. So I don't fault you at all for not knowing the questions. You're kind of, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Um, but with what limited knowledge you have right now and knowing kind of what kind of life you think you might want to have, I would just try to base your questions off of that. Okay. Yeah. I just, I thought I understood what double scrubbing meant and I guess I didn't. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, basically that. there's going to be two residents in there, but the resident who logs it as primary gets the credit for it and the other one doesn't, um, so yeah, and two residents can't be in the same case and both log primary or first assist. So that's why that when that comes into issue in programs. Yeah. Okay. Yona, do you have any more questions? I think Dr. Hotchkiss honestly answered every question yeah. because because a lot of the people who were asking us questions on Instagram, we just wanted to sort of expand it on every single um, forefront on just different things for a residency program so you I think you hit every point awesome. that we really wanted so I, again we are so thankful for you Dr. Hotchkiss for coming on and sharing all your knowledge because we just love doing these things with you because yeah, you're the go-to guy and you're definitely the guy who has this big social media presence and who's always teaching people a lot about like our field so it's great to have you on awesome yeah if I could like just summarize real quick I would say use that Casper Crip, like, um, I don't know what it is, directory or whatever, they should always have a contact in the phone there. So try to get a hold of them through there first, that way you don't feel like you're being intrusive and invading anybody on social media or something. Um, but if you have to, I, I would hope most residents are cool and personally between you and I, if they are a jerk to you that way, that's probably not a program you'd wanna go to, at least I wouldn't want to. Um, and then just try to get your, like, like I said, get that FaceTime in, but try not to be annoying and obnoxious in any way, which is like a really good tip going into your fourth year too. Um, just be yourself because you want them to like you based on you and you don't want to have to hold up that fake persona for three years if you do match there. And um, just to, even when you have that month, if you do get a residency there, I would say try to make some type of a connection or a friendship with at least one or two of the residents. And then that way you can stay in touch with them. Um, like say, if you have a TV show that you guys both like, then periodically throughout the year, you can just text them like, do you see that episode? And it's not annoying. Like, hey, I like your program. And they're like, yeah, I know you do. <laughs> you, you've told me before because you're going to not know how to keep in touch with them. So try to at least build a friendship or a relationship in somehow so that you can continually kind of organically communicate with them throughout the years it's kind of what I did a lot and I think it helped so that would be my best advice out of all of this this was really helpful thank you so much yeah that that also even that helps like how to communicate with someone because people might think 
oh yeah, maybe I just need to send a reminder that I'm interested I know. in the program. Yeah. yeah, I felt that way all the time, especially like when you start getting close to a match and you're like, shoot, I haven't seen them since June. Like, how do I remind them that I like them? And you don't want to just be like, hey, remember me? I was really good and I really like you guys. And so it's kind of, I would always try to find something that I had in common with them, at least like so talk to them, like I said, more organically and naturally rather than a forced thing. So, cause I still like, I make friends with students all the time and we'll talk throughout the year and it feels so much better just to have friends with somebody rather than have to deal with that. I mean, I get it too. If a student were to text me and remind me that they were there, that's totally fine. I get it, but there might not be, at some, I don't want to say that I'm cool, but there might not be residents that are as nice. Sometimes they get a weird ego persona era going on and whatever. <laughs> no, thank you for that because uh, again, that's enough, that could have been another a part of a YouTube video on how to just communicate with people. Like, All right, we'll I think do it. That, we can do it next time. We, we can do it. Right? Like yeah, I, it's just, I feel like that's a problem with us. I just feel like, especially with COVID now, we just forgot how to communicate properly with people. And we're sort of just depending on social media nowadays just to get our like point across or like uh, convey something. And it's just, that it's become an issue. We're not getting a, a lot of physical, personal interaction with people. So it's um, hard too, just because you feel like, you feel like you're a student. You feel like you're kind of like lesser than the resident. Exactly. You definitely don't want to like, you feel like you don't want to reach out to the director and be a pain to them. You know, the resident's busy. You feel like kind of insignificant. So it can be hard. I, right. I, I hated that. So I feel Thank for you. you guys. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Appreciate it. But with that being said, um, again, uh, to our audience, just please subscribe to Dr. Uh, Dr. Adam Hotch's YouTube channel. The link is going to be in the bottom down below, as well as his Instagram. And, uh, hit the subscribe button for us as well, because again, we love teaching about podiatry. We love just hearing from you guys. And again, podiatry is life. So um, thank you again, Dr. Hotchkiss for coming along today and just sharing all your knowledge again, because we do really appreciate you. Of course. Thanks. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. And it was fun. Pod Squad signing out. Mm -hmm.